It's finally here. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Roma Panda 15 Those of you guys in the cab know me as uh, Geki, um, since I guess I do have that audience as well. And uh, finally, first Let's Play I ever did on this channel was the original Valkyria Chronicles on the PlayStation 3. I never got a chance to actually finish that Let's Play on that channel. I finished the game multiple times. I didn't get a chance to finish it on the channel, however, just due to the fact that I was operating off of an Asus T100 Transformer book, which wasn't the best computer, and uh, yeah, didn't have the best software to do everything I wanted to with. Now I got much better software to utilize, I got much better uh, technology at my disposal here, and uh, this will be the third time we have a Valkyria Chronicles Let's Play on this channel, and I am determined to finish this one. So let's get right into it. For forewarning, I have the day our hometown burned. That was the day we enlisted. At last, we had something to believe in, something worth fighting for. None of us yet knew. We couldn't foresee. What this war would cost us. It was a battlefield, but it was where we grew up. Fair warning, I have played the demo of this on my Nintendo Switch. Uh, so my Switch version is going to be my own personal copy that I had to play. This is on the PS4, as you guys saw at the beginning. Uh, I bought the collector's edition because I'm a big supporter of this game. I do have it on Steam as well. And uh, yeah, just really happy. Um, I did play through Valkyrie Revolution about two months ago and that was quite the disappointment so I'm glad to finally have an actual, the actual Valkyria Chronicles in my hand in my hands again. And there's our man Claude. Again with the flowers. Valkyria, the Valkyria series always has this really strange relationship between warfare and beautiful flowery environments like this. Wind out of the northeast, clear skies, and... Uh, 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 huh? Nap time's over. Come on, Raz. I wasn't napping, just resting my eyes. You gotta relax, man. You're way too freaking tense. Your hands are shaking. <sighs> So sack up, Commander. It's about time we get ready to roll out. Let's show those imps what's come to them. Yeah. <clears throat> A shift in the wind. There. Huh? You getting those wind whispers again? Imperials incoming! All right, boys! It's go time! Squad E! Do you read me? Squad E! This is Commander Claude Wallace. Squad E! The Imperial forces are on the move! Heading for your position! Ready to engage. Do not let them break through to the front line! We're counting on you! Roger that. Over. Good luck, Squad E. They won't advance until they're done shelling the area. We should have time to prepare. Kai, take a group to that southern hill and slow down their left flank. Raz, take two soldiers east and make some noise for me. You got that? Gotcha. Keep up or get left behind. At your command. Hoffin. The Hoffin. Ah, oh, man. Squatty, ready Dude, to Dude, the smile. All right. oh, the smile on my face right now is... Oh, man. Oh, I've been waiting so long to play this ah uh, it is finally here eliminate yes. all imperial hostiles let's stop their advance squad e move out all right it's going to give me a bunch of tips on how to do all the battle stuff this is like my sixth time playing this I'll type of Valkyria Chronicles game, so I'm not going to really pay attention to it. I'll kind of teach you guys as we go, for those of you guys interested in picking this up, kind of what you can expect. Okay. First we'll see how they respond to some infantry. 
Squad E, move out. Alrighty. So it is a turn-based combat game. Uh, it's turn-based strategy okay. game is the best way to put it. Looks like everyone's in position. Finally. It's time. I'm their commander. It's up to me to get everyone out alive. Concentrate. Remember your training. We can do this. I can do this. Alright, so he's going to talk about command mode here. I'm going to basically breeze through it while we do it. So, uh, we have the D-pad. This is how we can select three different units and kind of see their stat, their overall stats. So we have Roz here, who is a command unit. That's what the little badge on the top left of his portrait means. Uh, if we go to command, we can choose to evacuate our command or give him an actual command order if we so choose. Square pulls up our unit list, and if we hit triangle, we get a more in-depth look at the character. So Roz is a sergeant. He's a shock trooper, level one. You see all his HP, his action points, his accuracy, his dodge capability, his weapon that he's carrying, as well as the stats of all of that. If we go to the right, we get the cooler info. I Whoops, this. I hit X on accident. So this is called action mode. Uh, we went from command mode into action mode here. Command mode is basically a third person shooter aspect of it. So we move a unit with the D-pad or left stick, preferably left stick. And the AP gauge at the bottom is gonna kind of gauge how far we are allowed to move. So we're going to have a move towards these sandbags here. Alright. I'm not going to attack just yet. So once we're at the sandbag we can crouch here and then we can go to target mode with R1. And we can use the left stick to kind of gradually aim and then the D-pad to kind of incrementally aim. Uh, headshots in this instance will do more damage than body shots, obviously. Uh, they're called criticals. If I press square, I can switch to a frag, I can switch to my healing item, etc. But we're just going to kind of dome this guy real quick. Boom. And you have shots to kill out of your total shots fired. Um, range distance matters a lot when you're doing these kinds of engagements, so always keep that in mind. And then if we press the touchpad, we can end a unit's action. We can also press circle to end it as well. I'm not going to do that just yet. I'm going to keep moving him. Commencing counter -attack. And he's going to tell me about sandbags, like I just tell you. So uh, basically, when you crouch behind sandbags, you become harder to hit, and you also can no longer be critical. Uh, it's different from the past games. In the past games, it used to also give you a defensive buff as well. So I'm going to hit circle here and end my action before he can fire another volley at me. And we're gonna continue. Damn it, these assholes are in my way. I can't break through this. Why not? You're invincible, right? And now we get best girl. Are you really getting tripped up over some common foot soldiers? Why don't you ever stop and think? Oh, shut up. Just hurry and take them out, will ya? Thought you'd never ask. This won't take long. And now we have Kai. So let's take a look at Kai here in our info list. So Kai is our first sergeant. She's our sniper. Very low HP compared to Roz, as you can tell. Again, uh, snipers are always classified as like glass cannon sort of characters, so you do have to deal with that. Uh, she does have a sniper rifle with a really good range, really good uh, damage, and uh, snipers tend to be a one-shot kill if you hit them in their if you hit an enemy in the critical point, typically being their head. Uh, and I can't view their potentials here, but basically what I was trying to get at before is this is called their potentials. So you see we have Deadeye, Empty Stomach, and Fool's Protector. We'll go through those in a little bit when we get into it. So let's exit this view here. Uh, options brings up the menu. I'm going to turn down the music just a tad while I'm at it because it's a bit loud. Valkyrie games are known for beautiful music, so I still want it to be present, but I don't want it to be super loud like it is currently. Uh, let's see, what about my battle options? Nothing? Okay, good. So we'll save this real quick. There we go. Alright, so we're going to select Kai here, and we're going to have Kai take out one of these dudes. There we go. I, yeah, I just told everybody about the sniper class. So snipers actually have ranged optics that you can zoom in a little bit further with. So we're going to use her, and uh, yes, 
Kai is best girl for very obvious reasons. Alright, so I have an option here. I can take out this guy, or if I hit R1, I can switch it over and engage, some of, and engage this guy way out here. Which, if I still hit him in the face at this range, I'll be able to kill him. It's important to note that uh, the crosshair in the middle doesn't really matter a whole lot. Basically, anywhere within that circle that you see is where your shots will land, with more potential than landing in the middle, obviously. So we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to take out this guy so I can move Roz up. There we go. He's done. Too easy. Our allies have been cool, taken cool. Out. And that's that. That's our turn there with uh, Kai. Best girl in the game. Um, I'm actually going to save my last command point for the end of this turn here. Uh, when you save your command point, you can use it your next turn, basically. So we'll do that real quick, like. Enemy action phase now. Alright, so it looks like he's just going to move out into the middle of the open there, which is good. There's still another one there. I think there's two more there. From what I remember in the demo. The demo is the first three or four levels or so, so you do get um, a little bit of that that you can utilize. But uh, yeah, we're just going to stick with this for now. There we go. About time, Claude. Yeah, I know. Soldiers, forward! Now's our chance to take the offensive. Alright. Now we get the rest of the infantry here. So you don't you don't have to just use one unit. You can use multiple units with multiple CP. However, um, they'll like it's saying they'll, they'll tire out, and you'll have less AP at the start of that at the start of that unit's action phase than you would uh, normally. So we're gonna start it off here with let's go with let's check out Curtis. So Curtis likes Laurent. Oh, likes is something else that's really important. This allows you to do buddy team firing. So if your units are close together, they'll fire together. So we have Zyga and Roz here that'll shoot together. I'm going to command Zyga first because he can get in line with uh, Roz pretty decently here. So we're going to push him all the way up. Uh -oh. the enemy's firing back. And I'm actually... Oh, now it's going to tell us about critical hits. <laughs> Come on. It also tells you about their effect, your effectiveness too. So you have versus person versus armor or er versus armor or area. So you have all that. Uh, this guy, like we said with the ranges, this guy's a bit too far out. Um, 28 to kill out of 20 shots. I don't like my effective odds there. So I'll target this guy down, and then I'll just shoot that guy in the back with Kai. There. I like to play this a little right. bit slowly, but depending on my units I have in the field, I will play them pretty recklessly at times as well. So that's just kind of uh, how I like to do things in this game. I got this. All right, I'm actually gonna push Roz up to the same line here and have him just hold position. I'm not gonna have him shoot anything just yet. I do have my two scouts, so scouts have the most AP, meaning they, they can move the most, they're moved the longest on their turns. So I think I'm going to have my scouts flank across this back line here. That's probably the best. First things first, though, let's get Kai up and engaging. Engage that hooligan on the hill. Oh, you're going to hit this Kai? I don't think she will, but we'll go for it. Ooh, beautiful, beautiful shot. This is why she's best girl. Great job. I knew you had it in you. And next we have the Hoffin. I'm probably going to call it the Edelweiss a couple of times. Just because that's uh, the light tank from, or the heavy tank from the first game. I'm very used to that term, so <laughs> you will have to deal Let's with that. Tanks, huh? this one's all yours, and uh, yeah, here we go. Now we get to see the joys of Valkyria Chronicles being the tank combat. It's our turn now. 
fire up the engine, Miles. Which is actually, it's pretty yes, intuitive. Uh, okay, obviously, in real Destroy life, most, tank. most tank engagements that happen are around two to three kilometers in distance. But in this instance, just due to the technology and the fun story aspect of it, you're typically going to have battles within uh, within like 20 meters of each other, and it's kind of crazy. But you still have all the weak points. Uh, so they're saying these tank traps can be ironically destroyed by tanks, uh, but there are areas that tanks can't not enter, obviously. So the areas tanks can't enter are usually marked on the map, so you do have to deal with that. But we got some pretty good engagement opportunities here, and we get to do some <laughs> berm out. jockeying. Got to be careful not to destroy the sandbags, as I can still Stand utilize firm, those. Drive us all back. There we go. We got a nice berm set up here. So they're going to talk about the three different methods tanks have to utilize. AP is good against armor. Explosive mortars will hit a broad area with a ragnite blast, obviously, and then the machine gun. Uh, best way to think about it is the mortar is basically just your HE round, and then you have the machine gun, obviously, for coax work. Um, I don't think I'm going to hit him in the engine, but if you shoot this blue glowing engine back here, you do get a one-shot kill, which is awesome. It is hard to hit, though. So I think we're just going to use this hold down position and just engage from here. We do have good side armor shots. He's going to hit our front armor most of the time, which is obviously the strongest armor in a, in a tank. So we're good there. All right, last move. I'm going to move Nico up. And we're going to push to this back side here, this backwoods area, and see what we got. Shame about the flowers. Oh. Oh, cheeky. I can't move that direction yet. Do I have to destroy? Oh, I don't think I destroyed it with the Edelweiss. Yeah, I didn't destroy it with the Edelweiss. That's interesting. In the demo, you could move through there, unless I'm just an idiot. So here he goes, big fancy pants tank right here. Is he going to engage my tank, or is he going to engage... Hey, of course he's going to engage my tank. Good. We can keep going. Oh, man, it's been forever since I played one of these games. <laughs> so I'm going to be a lot more informative in this first video. As we go throughout the thing, you're going to see a lot more <laughs> emotion out of me as far as loving this stuff. Uh, I think we're going to do it. Alright, I'm doing a really risky move here, and we're going to see if it pays off. We want to talk about tank combat, guys. Uh, York, Theron, this one's for you. My friendly tankers in the cav. Kaboom. And there we have it. Ah, there's a little bit more to that map than what meets the eye there. Uh, I think they changed the objective on us <laughs> than it was in the demo. Squaddy, don't take shit from nobody. Claude knows what I'm. Whoa, you okay? Flowers. Uh. Oh yeah, they didn't stand a chance. Come on, man. You're supposed to be commander of the Ranger Corps. Commander still has a heart, same as a foot soldier. Rank doesn't make this any less painful to see. Interesting. He's not. He doesn't care about the loss of life. He cares about the loss of nature, which is really interesting. Oh, but crying over flowers. Even little girls have bigger balls these days. <laughs> they just have Roz. Maybe, but what matters is that their hearts. All right, I get it. Look, just go turn in your report already, will ya? can't go get sloshed if we're stuck here on standby. Good point. I'll head to the command center. Hey, you do that. And tell the brass to send us tougher imps to fight next time, yeah? <laughs> so in the first game, he played as um, non-combatant troops. In this game, you actually play as the frontline combat soldiers of the Galian army, which we'll get into the story more here in a second about all of that. But uh, you'll notice kind of a big difference between the two. Um, I really love the first story because you really were just a group of teenagers that uh, 
were kind of thrown into this war to defend your homeland and everything. And this group is a lot different. There's a lot more, a lot of different ages that you'll see of characters in this group, and they're they all kind of have their own reasons for why they're in their war, and their personalities really shine through. That's the one thing I love about this Valkyrie Chronicles series is the characters just shine, and the the de they have so much development to them. It's amazing. Prologue. Operation so we're gonna have Northern a lot Force. of uh, we're gonna have a lot of dialogue here. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and shut up here in a second, and it's gonna tell us how to save now. I already know how to save. All you do is you hit triangle, and then you go into save. So we'll save real quick. There we go. And I would have shut up real quick because this is a very informative chapter about a lot of stuff that you'll uh, learn about. Sir, First Lieutenant Claude Wallace reporting in. Good work out there. Glad you're still in one piece. We're just about to go over our next operation. You're late. I'm sure you know standard procedure is to report immediately after a mission. I just remembered that's the next, I think it's the next uh, chapter thing where they have all that really exp expansive dialogue. But here's our other character, Minerva. <laughs> oh, Minerva. You're reporting too? That's lieutenant to you, Claude. Don't get smart with me just because we share rank. And this is I what, I, I, I guess it makes sense, but it doesn't make sense at the same time. If they're both lieutenants of different squads, how, how does she have seniority? But it, it's a fictional army, so I'm not going to get too into it. <clears throat> so and they're lieutenants lieutenant that lead squads. That's the other, like, what is this kind of thing that's going on? Hmm. Well, let's get started. Minerva. Give us a situation report. Yes, sir. Three months have passed since we went to war. I won't sugarcoat it. They're steamrolling us. By this point, a third of our territory is under Imperial control. This is officially a crisis. If it's that bad already, we won't even be able to sustain a war effort. You're right. And the Empire's only gaining momentum. If this draws out much longer... The Federation's finished. Uh. If we fall, that's it for Europa. Nobody else could stand against them. The Empire would take total control. It'd be a fascist continent ruled with an iron fist. We can't let that happen. Europa's future depends on us. Which brings us to now. The top brass finally got off their seats and sent us a plan. A counterattack that can turn the war around in one fell swoop, ready to be put into action. What are the orders? We put all our force into one strike. Break through their defenses and hit them where they'll hurt most. Soldiers, supplies. We'll use all reserves we have to make a final push and capture one crucial enemy base. And we lucky few of the 32nd Armored Ranger Battalion have been handpicked as the vanguard. Couldn't ask for a better mission, sir. Which enemy base are we targeting? Think bigger. We take this base, and we take their will to fight. But how could any one target mean that much to... Wait, you don't mean... You always were a clever boy, Claude. I think you've got it. Our target is the Imperial capital of Schwarzgrad. Let's fight back! 
Operation Northern Cross. The year was 1935 EC. Two great powers vied to control the continent of Europa. In the east, the sun rose over the autocratic East European Imperial Alliance, a dictatorship known as the Empire. In the west, a network of loosely allied democracies banded together to form the Atlantic Federation. Both powers depended on a precious mineral, ragnite, for their prosperity, its growing scarcity leading inevitably to war. With its overwhelming military might, the Empire captured one nation after another. While the Federation struggled to maintain unity, every battle driving them further back against the wall. Three months have passed. With seven-tenths of Europa falling to the Imperial War Machine, the Federation places all its hope in a desperate counterattack. Operation Northern Cross. Six million soldiers fought in this campaign. It claimed more lives than any other in the Second European War. Federation historians call it the Eastern Theater, but the Empire knows it as the War for the Motherland. Forward, soldiers! This is the battle you've been training for! Operation Northern Cross begins now! We'll wipe those Imperials clear off the face of Europa! Our time has come! Forward to victory! Countless soldiers fought and died on those fields, struggling to make their ideals a reality. Ordinary people thrust into extraordinary circumstances, fighting in the hopes that they would see a brighter future. What follows here is a record of those brave warriors, a record of that battle against the dark. Based on the diary of one Claude Wallace, the commander of the Federation's Gallian Squad E, Chapter 1, The Battle of Fort Crest. <sighs> I'm telling you guys, this game is beautiful. Good news, Claude. HQ has awarded you with This is the one thing I'm kind of like, eh, about, is they actually give you a medal in-game for every, I think it's like every achievement that you get, or trophy you unlock, etc. For whatever platform you're playing on. Which is kind of meh. I really wish video game companies would stop doing this whole thing where they just give you an award for completing a mission. <laughs> Unless it's like a very difficult mission or an optional mission that's meant to be extremely difficult. So completing it is obviously... A reward. It's rewarding to complete it, basically. But first mission of the game, and that's what we get, eh. It's going to tell us about accessories... We're not going to be able to do anything with them until we get to the actual HQ, which we'll unlock after this after this chapter, which we'll do in the next episode. So, I hate to cut it short here. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I'm definitely going to be doing multiple, multiple uploads a day of this because I'm probably going to binge this entire series in the next couple of days here because I just, oh my god, I love these this title so much. Valkyria Chronicles has always hold, held a special place in my heart as like one of the greatest games I have ever played and with some of the best character development I've ever seen in a video game before. So definitely going to see a lot of love from me in this entire series. And I do, I, I've, I've had issues in the past of not completing Let's Plays and kind of, kind of tapering off on them through the past like six or seven I get six or seven episodes or sometimes 30 episodes in and it just draw I just drop it off of the face of the earth just due to life stuff happening everything's in order on that front so you don't have to worry about any of that this series I will complete but I hope you guys enjoyed if you did please leave a like down below subscribe for more content and always leave a comment I try to read any old comments that I possibly can I try to reply to as many as I possibly can either way panda check in out